Greetings Rangers, I'm Kato Genesis, and this is a no-nonsense guide for Wasteland 3. This guide will be going over the perks that are secret and attainable through the gameplay, not through leveling up. And because of that, some of these perks can be missed completely. I will warn you there's mild spoilers in this guide, but I'll leave as much of the story out of it as I can. And as you can expect, I'll be showing you where you can find these perks and what they do. Let's begin. First up is the Vehicular Combat perk. This is a perk you can gain by helping out a man named Randy Get once you get inside the bazaar. You'll find him standing in the food court fussing about something, and if you speak to him, you can start the side quest Thicker Than Water to help him deal with the problems at the Get Homestead that is outside of town to the northeast, just as long as you actually go to the Get Homestead and at least do the main part of what Randy asks, which is making sure it's safe. Coming back to Randy at the entrance of the homestead should give you the option of recruiting him to Ranger HQ as a mechanic. After you do so, return to Ranger HQ over in Colorado Springs, and he will grant each of your squad mates the vehicular combat perk. This grants a plus 5% bonus damage to vehicles. These next three perks all come from the same place, but getting them is randomly shuffled in with some buffs, and getting the tokens to pay for these perks is a bit of an ordeal. The perks I'm talking about are Precognition, Fortune Cookie, and Eye of Tarjan. What you'll need for this is a keen eye for broken toasters and a toaster repairman or woman. Opening up some toasters, including the one you find at Ranger HQ, inside will be something called a Tarjan token. These brass tokens have one place in which they belong, and that is the fortune telling machine in Quarex's museum in the bazaar. Like I said, this is a bit of an ordeal. When you have one or more of these Tarjan tokens, you can head to the bazaar and save beforehand, use the coin in the machine, and hope that you get a perk. These perks are shuffled in with a few buffs as well. Of course, those buffs are temporary, so if you're not getting the effect you want, you can just simply reload your game or just get all the coins. Something that separates these perks from a lot of the other ones is it's not your entire party that gets these, it's only the person who inserts the coin in the fortune telling machine. And the reason I was talking about saving beforehand is that some of these perks definitely help some characters more than others, which I'll go over now. Precognition gives one character an evasion bonus of plus 10%. That's chance of the enemy enemy's attack missing. The fortune cookie perk gives a flat plus 15 constitution bonus, and the eye of Tarjan perk gives a cold resistance of 1% and a penetration boost of 2 when it comes to breaking through enemy defenses. Again, these perks are not party-wide, but instead granted to the ones who use the Tarjan tokens, and are part of a randomized pool that eventually runs out after inserting the max amount of coins. Mainly, I think you should determine ahead of time who should get precognition and just use them to plug all the coins in. Speaking of boosting perception, Investigative Eye is the next one, and this one's similar to how you helped out Randy get in the bazaar, except this is at the Machine Commune in the Denver Ruins. Thanks to the incredible show of force that is the Gipper's giant robotic Reagan statue and public execution with said statue, you may be enticed to go into the Western White House, which is where we need to go first. Here you'll find their doctor, the Wyman, and their engineer, Sister Nancy Forge. Speaking to either one of them will start the quest counterintelligence when you leave dialogue with them. In a nutshell, this will eventually take you to the machine commune to find out how they're so proficient at repairing both humans and robots. After you get past the Gippers and the Godfishers, however you need to, whom you're looking for when you get inside of the airport on the eastern side is Vivisecto, the local doctor. When you ask Vivisecto for the medical data, he'll ask you to find Vicky, his assistant, who was sent out back to gather some samples. Once you get the samples from Vicky, you can actually invite her to join you at Ranger HQ. After you do so and return to Ranger HQ, speak to Vicky in the med bay, and she will grant each of your party members the investigative eye perk, which raises each of their perceptions by one. Next up is the martial training perk. Sometime after the goings-on in Denver and the Bazaar, I think it's sometime after those two points, a woman by the name of Betsy and her crew will show up at Ranger HQ right in front of the war room, asking for your help in finding a work camp where they believe their family members were sent to. Their only lead on this is the marshals, and they're not too forthcoming with the information. If you have Marshal Quan in the party, you can bypass some of this, but speaking to Sheriff Daisy also can help. This leads you to find Frank Pappas over at the Sands Lux Apartments 
in Colorado Springs. His is the room basically straight ahead when you enter. After getting the information out of Frank that you need, you can then decide whether or not you bring him on to Ranger HQ as a training officer. And after you do so, the next time you're at Ranger headquarters, he will be outside of the garage teaching new recruits the ropes. And speaking to Frank will reward the martial training perk to each of your squad mates. Martial training adds plus two to leadership range. Hope you're feeling nerdy, because the next one is Game Master. I mean, I'm one to talk. This one is a bit tricky and easy enough to miss, but I'll start from the top. This one is granted to you from Quarex, the one with the delightfully nerdy museum in the bazaar. However, his side quest will only show up if the bazaar gets wiped out during Charlie Knows' quest of very hostile takeover. This is sometime after the events of Little Vegas. It's when Charlie contacts you on the radio, says, hey, Red Hats, let's go kill everyone at the bazaar. You can do two things. You can either take part, you absolute monster, or you can just ignore it and Charlie will carry on with the murdering anyway. After that does happen, Quarex will contact the Rangers via the radio, asking for help in the Warrens. It seems like he had gotten stuck there while looking for some collectibles. Find him down in the Warrens, help him out with his short quest, recruit him to Ranger HQ, after which he'll be found assisting in the museum. Then after you speak to Quarex, you will be granted the Game Master perk, which ups the critical chance of each person in your squad by 2%. Illustratio is next, and is another that takes a few steps. First, you need to find the Provost, the Latin-speaking AI ally. The Provost, like Quarex in the last entry, is also located in the Warrens, but he is locked away in one of the storage units, or I guess the Warrens consider this a prison cell, on the easternmost side. The storage unit will have a key lying around somewhere too, but there's nothing stopping you from lockpicking or breaking down the door, which is the method I like to use. If you break the door, find the key, lockpick it, whichever, once the Provost is free, he chooses to follow you. In order to get the Illustratio perk though, he will need to survive, but he is pretty strong and rarely a target. Once you have him in tow, make sure you have someone in your squad that has a toaster repair skill of seven or can be modified up to seven, and head to the Snowed Inn Resort, which is on the west side of the map in the Rockies, because the Provost needs something from there. In the eastern cabin of the Snowed Inn Resort, the one that has all the chickens in it, there's a busted toaster in here that needs some repairing. And inside of this toaster will have been an Owl of Minerva token. The Provost will then show up behind you and speak to you directly. He states in Latin, Minerva of the Night, join us. After this point, when you leave the Snowed Inn Resort, you will have a new location marked on your map, the Mysterious Cave up north. All that's left to do is drive up to said Mysterious Cave, enter to find others that look just like the Provost, who do a little chanting around an Owl of Minerva on the floor, and disappear. After which, your party all gain the Illustratio perk, which, just like Investigative Eye, grants one permanent point to Perception. I wasn't sure where to put this one because the Cyborg Tech perk has a couple of locations in which you can get it, and both methods are painful in different ways. Oh, and I'll also mention that Ironclad Cordite is a cyborg, so he comes with this perk by default. Anyway, if you go to the Machine Commune, that's on the east side of the map, Denver Ruins, and speak to Vivisecto, the doctor, inside the airport terminal, you'll be able to inquire about the enhancements that he talks about, giving you the option of paying around a thousand Colorado dollars for a cyborg tech control unit. This is a usable item, and whoever is selected, when you use it, gains the cyborg tech perk. All it says at this point is you can now equip cyborg mods, but if you're looking for more specifics I can help you out there. The cyborg mods fall under utility items because they do take up the utility slot, but grant some cool abilities that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. I'm hoping sometime after this guide come out the utility items have their own category in the inventory window, otherwise you have to look through your whole inventory and look at items and see if they are cyborg implants because they don't even really organize correctly, but they will be somewhere under the other utility items. Anyway, one example is the cyber fist, which which gives you a straight damage bonus to melee by 10% on whoever's using it. There are other body modifications you can get, and Vivisecto does sell some of them. Laser eyes, ways of stunning robots, an adrenal enhancer that ups your combat speed, just lots of options. Now, if you are in the situation where Vivisecto is no longer living, or no worky no more, then your only option at this point will be the Scar Collector's Leader Steel Trap at the Yuma County Speedway in the southeastern corner of the Colorado map. 
but I believe this is only if you take the Ironclad Cordite route in helping him take command of the Plains Gangs. When you approach Steel Trap, the current leader of the Scar Collectors, he will give an ultimatum to you and your team to kill the slave in a nearby cage or make one of your rangers a little less human. In other words, Cyborg with the horrific equipment in the corner. The upside of this route is it's going to be free surgery. The downside of this route, it's going to be free surgery. After using this terrible contraption, the ranger will acquire a serious injury that can't be removed by an injury kit. So you'll have to wait out the full duration of said injury and it's like 3000 something seconds. So if I were to say between these two methods, I would recommend going with Vivisecto and getting Cyborg Tech perks that way. And if you got that Cyborg Tech perk previously anyway and bring that Ranger with you when you confront Steel Trap, he'll recognize that you already have the Cyborg Tech perk and you can skip the ultimatum entirely. So again, depending on what your choice is, one hurts physically, one hurts monetarily. But Cyborg Tech is pretty cool. The final perk is Ranger Survivor. I saved this one for last because it is a little spoilery when it comes to dealing with the Patriarch's children. If you haven't yet, probably good to stop watching now. When you decide to head north to deal with Victory, or Vic, in the Little Hell section of Aspen, in order to get the Ranger Survivor perk, you have to kill him. And save both Laloka and Rook from their prisons in different sides of the mansion. Or lodge? Is it a lodge? It's a big place. Rook is on the guest suites on the east side, and Laloka is on the northwestern side in cold storage. So, rescue them both, kill Vic, meet them all back at the entrance, at which point they'll tell you they're gonna catch a ride back to HQ. It's another situation where you meet them back up at HQ, Laloka and Rook will be in the med bay, just like Vicky would be, and speaking to them grants the Ranger Survivor perk. This gives each of your current squad mates a healing bonus of plus 5%. I want to mention a couple of perks that may have been cut or maybe for DLC that I couldn't find much information on at all, and that is the Tuned Up and Biotech Serum perks. No idea what these effects do, and I haven't found them anywhere in the game, nor have I found the people that are involved with giving you these perks. So if you do find them, please tweet at me or leave it down in the comments or something. But for now, one of the best things you can do for the channel if you enjoyed this video and wish to show your support is patreon.com slash Kato Genesis. All these cool people on screen now, you could be one of them, takes as little as a buck. Or you could even go the extra mile and be as cool as Wasteland Legends Fen, whose name I read off aloud after every video. Even if you can't join a Patreon, I'm just glad that you are here. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander the wasteland like you own it.